watching Today with Marilyn and Sarah. Oh my goodness, we love to get some time with you and we know that God encourages you through this program, through this interview. And so just wanna do a special shout out to our partners. Partners, you are so essential. Thank you so much for your prayer. Thank you for your financial support. You're watching today, right now in this moment because of partners. So thank you for helping us to cover the earth with the word and connect everyone to the heart of God. And mom, we have a great guest today. Oh, we do. This is Glenn Berto, but he says, why am I not healed? And I think this is a big deal for people. You know, they say, well, I believe in healing, or I think I do. Why am I not healed? When God promised it, what's the problem? What's the crisis? You will just love this. And so you need the book, of course, and you need to read it, and you need to get maybe four or five. Pass it on, because you have friends. And you know, sometimes I sit outside my house and read books because my neighbors ask about them. Whoopee! So it's opportunity. That's really good. And mom, just to encourage our viewers, Tony, there's a testimony here to share. Tony was blessed financially with two job offers. Oh my goodness. And you might be watching right now and maybe you're struggling with a job, a job decision, or you need a job. Maybe you've had recent unemployment and you're just having a really difficult time trying to make financial ends meet. So hop on the phone, get on the website. We would love to pray for you and see God step in and help you with the job thing. And again, if you have any need, you might have a need for healing. Of course, you're gonna watch watch the interview here and that'll help encourage you in your faith for healing. But maybe you have a need with a family issue. Maybe you have a decision in front of you. Maybe you're struggling with some emotional issues. Whatever it is, hop on the phone, get on the website. We love to pray for you. Hey there, I want to encourage you to download our app on your phone. You're like, really serious? Absolutely. We have some amazing things on our app, really convenient for you. We have today's program. We have opportunities to pray for you. We have places for you to give and partner with us. We also have things that will help you know what events are coming up and group tours that you could join, as well as a Bible reading plan, daily Bible reading plan. This app is super relevant, very convenient, and super helpful for your daily living with Jesus. Are you tired? Are you broken? Do you feel far from God? God says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. I want you to call out to God today. God loves you. He is listening. He is a God of love and a God of life. Welcome to Today with Marilyn and Sarah. We are so very happy to get some time with you. And I'm very excited to introduce to you, Pastor Glenn Berteau. Thank you so much. It's great so being with you. So delighted you're here. Oh, I'm excited so to delighted. see you. Excited. Totally good. Uh, not everybody knows who you are. So can you give us a quick thumbnail? And you have this great book, Why Am I Not Healed? It's a million dollar question. Everybody asks this, right? Everybody. But who are you first? Well, well, I, <laughs> I, I'm the founder of the house ministries, the house churches. Uh, I've been, th I was 30 years in Modesto, California was the main church. And then we have churches around the country in different places. My son now has taken over the house churches and in San Diego, uh, Fort Worth, Modesto, and uh, we in Cambodia with the with uh, Bible schools in India, we have 50 churches there. Mm -hmm. So, and then we feed so many people too. We do all this ministry. Everything we do has to be outside the church. Uh, I was saved outside the church. We're not the lights of the church, we're the lights of the world. And so we've got to get out of the building else people like me would never know Christ. So I'm always thinking of who can I reach for Christ and who can I touch? We're very evangelistic. We've seen 130,000 people saved in our, since we've been in Modesto. And all I want to do is just please the Lord. I want to do what he's asked me to do. And um, there's nothing great about me, no star hung over my manger, so I'm not the big deal. <laughs> I just do what he tells me to do. And we reach people and we love people. And we have seen so many lives changed and so this is what I love to do. So I'm, I'm kind of an evangelistic apostolic pastor that, that let's just prepare, but this is the church. The church is leaving the building. We've mm -hmm. got to touch the city. Mm -hmm. And you wrote this book called, Why Am I Not Healed? 
So, and that's a, that's a, a million dollar question. It People is. ask this all the time. So clearly it's a big deal. And in here, you've got some amazing insights, wisdom, truths. Um, and I want to ask this question. So in chapter 13, you have like 13 reasons people don't get healed. Um, and interesting through all these different reasons. But uh, on page 149, it says people lose heart and they give up. That's reason number four. And I'm bringing that to your attention. And I'm asking you as well, have you ever lost heart? Have you ever given up? Mm -hmm. Have you ever gotten so discouraged you'd like say, I quit? I want to encourage you to hop on the phone, get on the website. We want to pray for you. But Pastor Glenn, when you talk about this reason in particular, uh, how do you see that play out with people for healing? I quit. I give up. Well, uh, people don't understand, don't understand that scripture of losing heart until you have had a prolonged illness, a prolonged difficulty, a prolonged issue in your life. It's easy to go through a day or two. But how about years of something that you're walking through and you're seeing other people healed around you, but it's not happening for you. You know, you're laying by the water and everybody else is getting healed, but you're not. And how discouraging is that when you see the person you're sitting next to in church talk about their breakthrough and you're still broken down? And so we do lose heart. The reason it says don't lose heart, because we do lose heart. But it's encouraging us. You will lose heart, but be encouraged. Don't grow weary in losing heart because you will reap. It will come. The only thing I can't tell you is when it comes. I can tell you it will, but I can't tell you when. But God, in the process, everything he's brought me through and taught me that I can tell and teach anybody else is he had to have me taste and see. It wasn't just a sermon. God had to bring me through it just so Jesus had to, he suffered to, under, so we under, he understands suffering. I walked through these things. I said, God, why do I have to walk through this? He said, so you can understand what other people walk through. Mm. Why, did I, why did I have to deal with that? And don't, why did I have cancer after this? Why did I have this and this? He said, because you're going to be talking to people that are dealing with this and you're going to be able to identify and so, so see, compassion in the Greek means to suffer with. Mm. I can't suffer with you. Say if that I, again. Compassion in the Greek means to suffer with. So if I have compassion for you, it's not feeling sorry for you. I feel what you feel. I feel that pain. So when somebody's at an altar and, and, and they're saying, I have leukemia or I have this, my sister uh, uh, passed away with, with uh, uh, ovarian cancer. Uh, my parents uh, had issues. I've had, I've had, so, I've had at least 10 times I should have died. And the devil just has tried to kill me and kill this message. That's why I said, I've got to, I've got to put this out. This book was written for me and the miracle that happened, they, they sent it to press. But I said, the last chapter is, is a resurrection story. And I said, I'm not only going to write part of it. I said, my wife's going to write what she saw of her husband dead. My kids are going to write to see and explain how they saw their dad dead and what it did to them. And that last chapter, I said, you need to put this in here. And that's in the back of the book. It, it, this will, this is an answer uh, to, a, to a major question that you just asked. It's, a, it's an answer because this is what I needed for my own miracle. I wrote for my own miracle, this book. Didn't know it was for me. I thought it was for you, but it was really for me. But I, I'm just telling you, you're going to run across a time in your life where you can't handle it. Doctors are going to tell you, thank you, doctors, for what you do. But I have a book that has a second opinion. And my second opinion is, says, by my stripes, you're healed. God's the only one that can take something bad, make it worse, and call it a promotion. <laughs> He's the only one that seems to <laughs> yeah. walk through, take everybody in the Bible. They went something right. bad, then it got worse, and then all of a sudden really? they get promoted. Yeah. And God uses those things. But there are times where you can fight your battles, but some of you are watching that you can't get out of your grave. Close. You can't even get out of your tomb. That's where the body of Christ and the church is so important. Lazarus couldn't get out of his tomb. Somebody had to roll the stone away. He couldn't get out of his grave clothes. Somebody had to take those off him. I was in a place, I could pray for a lot of people, but now I needed it. 
I needed people around me to unwrap me. That's why the body of Christ is so important. And that's why the devil's trying to destroy the church because he wants to disunify us because there's power when we come together and pray for one another. Your program is praying and beliefs for miracles. We need miracles today, more miracles than we ever had before. Marilyn, we need you still here. You need to keep praying for miracles and praying for us. This program is needed because there are people out there watching right now, and I know you're suffering. And I, I'm just still coming out of a lot of things. I had cancer, had all kinds of other things, bladder surgery, had all these issues. I, I, I was on dialysis. I needed a kidney. I needed a kidney transplant. Three weeks out of the hospital, my kidney's healed. The doctors don't understand how that happened. My bladder was destroyed. Bladders, bladders started working. E everything in my body started changing. God made, we talk about it. He made our bodies, but he also has the power to resurrect and, and build it back. Mm -hmm. You know, you might be watching right now and, and I just want to encourage you. You might be struggling in your own faith. You might be discouraged. You might say, you know, I've, I've fought the good fight and I'm tired. I'm battle weary. I'm, I'm over the top. I'm done. I'm finished. And I want to encourage you to hop on the phone, get on the website. We want to pray for you that God would strengthen, encourage, resurrect your faith. You know, you might be in a, a Martha Mary situation in, in John chapter 11. John chapter 11, Lazarus had died and both Martha and Mary had different reactions to his death. Mary was a puddle of tears and just overwhelmed with the emotions of it. Martha was, it was kind of more dialoguing, objective, a conversation with Jesus. Both, both women, both sisters struggling with the death of their brother that Jesus could have prevented his death. And sometimes we get discouraged. We get discouraged, you know, God, you said you'd do this and you didn't do it. And how come and it's too late? It's over, you know, that Lazarus is in the tomb. It's over that your opportunity, the window's closed, the opportunity's done and you're discouraged. You're frustrated. You're even angry with God, bitter with God. We want to pray for you. We want to pray that God would come resurrect life in your heart, pour love into your soul, that you would see clearly what's, what is God's plan and design and purpose and so that you wouldn't just be uh, stuck in, in death and stuck in despondency. Hop on the phone, get on the website, give us the opportunity to get to pray for you. And when you do as well, grab your copy, Why Am I Not Healed? And I would encourage you, I bet you've had a couple friends yes. <laughs> who have had this question, right? You know, they had an experience, you're like, hey, and this would be a great resource to pass on to your friends. And you could also go through this in a Bible study or a small group, a book club, a great opportunity to really explore and discuss and see God grow faith in your heart for resurrection as well as healing. We'll be right back. Marilyn and Sarah have been covering the earth with the word on television for over 50 years. But television isn't the only way their ministry can be viewed. Today with Marilyn and Sarah can be seen on platforms such as YouTube, Roku, Fire TV, as well as podcasts on iTunes and Google. It's easier than ever to be encouraged with God's work at home, work, or on the go. You can replay any program at any time. Tune in and be blessed. Hey there, I want to encourage you to download our app on your phone. You're like, really serious? Absolutely. We have some amazing things on our app, really convenient for you. We have today's program. We have opportunities to pray for you. We have places for you to give and partner with us. We also have things that will help you know what events are coming up and group tours that you could join, as well as a Bible reading plan, daily Bible reading plan. This app is super relevant, very convenient, and super helpful for your daily living with Jesus. Is it God's will to heal? Is it God's will to heal you? For your gift of $40 or more, we will send you, Why Am I Not Healed? Through his own personal and family challenges, Pastor Glenn Berto breaks through misunderstandings regarding God's good intentions for his children. He shows how God can turn the worst into the best and use it for our benefit. We will also send you Sarah's In Step with the Spirit book, Marilyn's Move Your Mountain CD teaching, and our healing scripture card. For your gift of $100 or more, we will include our lovely healing Afghan. Filled with scriptures, this beautiful cotton throw will keep you warm and cover you with the healing word of God. 
activate the faith you need to move mountains and be healed. Call or click today for this anointed resource. Welcome back. Listen, Glenn, what are the most important things that people can do while they are standing for healing? What well, are the most? Yeah, well. Because I know there are a lot. There's a lot. And, and I'm speaking for those of us that have been in a situation where it looked hopeless and even coming out of it, it's a prolonged illness or prolonged sickness and it just you suffer. Every day you're hurting. And in your mind, I know there's people watching that I don't know if I'm ever going to come out of this again. The New Testament, as you know, is about others. G Jesus, even in the garden, says, Peter, James, John, y'all come with me, pray. I can't, I don't want to do this by myself. You got to, you must surround yourself with people that have authority, people that believe that Bible will read the scriptures. I put in, I put in the book, all these healing scriptures, you've got to speak that. There's power in the word of God in speaking that. It's a spirit of death is what it is. It's a spirit of infirmity is what it is. Talk to it. We talk to our children worse than we talk to the devil. We yell at our kids, but we go ahead and don't, don't let the devil, we just let him get by. It's time to point of who's at the bottom of this, and it's a spirit of death that's trying to destroy your health is what it is. So I need at times people around me when my faith is not strong. They're not feeling what I'm feeling. I can reciprocate that when I come out of it, but when I'm in it, I need you. So I've got to have people. The worst thing that can happen is the devil single you out and you sit there and mope by yourself, and then you start complaining. God doesn't hear your complaints. He hears your worship, but he doesn't hear complaining. Right. And so I've got to find people that have authority, I, that, that know the word of God, that are not afraid to pray crazy prayers, prayers that, that most people wouldn't believe that would take place, prayers that would remove leukemia, Prayers that remove stage four cancer, prayers that remove rheumatoid arthritis, remove heart disease, remove your cancer. Prayers, people like that, that have the, the authority and the, and the faith to believe that God can do anything. And if he can do what he did for me, where I was, I was gone. I was dead. I'm going to heaven. And if God can bring me back, he can bring you back. You just need to fight. And you need to realize that you're here for a purpose. You're not here to quit. You're here for a purpose. And you must be an assignment is why, I know it was with me, assignment that God has for you, the devil doesn't like. So what you do, you need to point at him down there and say, devil, your request has been denied. It's not going to be today. You know, I love this. Yeah, hop on the phone, get I on the website. This. We want to pray for you. We want yeah. to stand there and be firm and strong and right. stand up and say no and surround you with faith and confidence and security. Absolutely. Hop on the phone. If you've had a diagnosis of leukemia, if you've had stage four cancer, you've had these diagnoses, you've had these kids that have run away from home, you've had these problems in your job, you've had the financial issues. Hop on the phone, get on the website. We want to pray for you and stand in the gap and believe strong and partner up with you that God is going to turn it around and do something miraculous because we have an assignment. We have a purpose. We have a plan. God knows the plans he has for us, plans to prosper us, give us hope and a future that we have assignments, things that God has for us that he absolutely put us on the planet to do something. And, and when we get discouraged, that, that saps, that takes that away. So we need to really stand and encourage and hold, lock arms together with each other. Yeah, this life is not to be lived alone. You've got to you and must find people that will be with you. And, uh, you know, it's, everything's reciprocated. If you go and help somebody, guess what? Somebody's going to come help you and pray for you. But I do understand the quitting points. I understand growing weary. I understand if I'm ever going to get out of this. I, see, this is what that book re will relate to all of this and will help you and encourage you. And because I needed people around me to do that. I needed people to tell me, you're not always going to hurt, Glenn. You're, you're not always going to feel pain. You're going to be able to return, speak again. You're going to be able to do that again. And in my mind, when I look at myself in the physical realm, no, it's impossible. Look at me. I'm, I'm, everything's broken in my chest. I'm on dialysis. Uh, my bladder's not working. 
Uh, I, I, I got a fog. I can't think. Everything in my body is hurting. How am I ever going to be used again? And I have to have people encouraged. That's why it says encourage one another while mm-hmm. it's called today. At least you fall into the deceitfulness of sin. So I need the encouragement. You be an encourager first. Because that's what y'all do. That's what I do. I encourage. But then when I needed it, I couldn't encourage myself. I needed somebody else to do that for me. And you find those people because they're out there that will encourage and pray for you and stand with you and want to get a call from you and say, I'm weak right now. Would you stand with me? And there will always be people that will do that. Mm-hmm. It's really, really good. I just encourage you, hop on the phone, get on the website, make sure you grab your copy. Why am I not healed? Super, super helpful and really give you some illumination and, and encouragement in your soul, faith in your soul for God healing your body. And you know, sometimes we get a diagnosis from a doctor that says you have to change your lifestyle. Right. Is God really in that whole change your lifestyle thing or yeah, is that sure. how so? Well, because you reap what you sow, you reap what you sow. So if I have a 40 year old man that calls me up, say, Pastor Glenn, and all he's done is eating Popeye's and Burger King and he's having a heart attack <laughs> then and, and he's eating bad fried food the whole time. He said, would you come pray for me? The devil's trying to kill me. I said, I'll come up and pray for you, but I'm not going to rebuke the devil. I'm going to rebuke the fork and the knife and a spoon because you have reaped exactly what you know is bad for you. So same thing with the same thing in marriage. I'll reap what I sow. I don't just tell my wife I love her when we got married. I need to continue that else it's just going to fall apart. I will reap that with your health is the same way in relationships. It's in everything. Everything is a seed harvest, seed harvest. And so I have to plant that in my health. In relationships, I've got a plant to be able to receive. So don't sit back and wonder why everybody, you are the one that has to plant and then you will receive, it'll come back to you. But yeah, you reap what you sow. It's not God's fault that you smoked all your life and have cancer and you say, why didn't God heal me? It says it on the package. It's on the package that you're going to have cancer. So you reap what you've sown. Now, will God heal you? He may, but he doesn't have to. He doesn't have to because you have broken an immutable law. And that's an immutable law of God that doesn't change. It doesn't change. Day and night doesn't change. Night and day doesn't change. Summer and winter doesn't change. Cold and heat does not change, the Bible says. He said, that's an immutable law of God. Devil can't change it. He doesn't change it. It's just done. And so you see that into bad things in your life, it's going to grow and bad things will come out. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, and I think too, one of the things though, I, I want to ask this question, it, what happens if you see your parents doing something, you know, like your parents raise you on, right. uh, a and you know, shrimps and all kinds of, um, well, delay- you're making me hungry. Yeah. <laughs> is what you do. yeah. So what do you do with that? Cause that's the, your parents train you. Hard. And- it's so hard <laughs> to take Cajun food away from me. No. <laughs> It is very hard <laughs> to do that, and and I have sinned. I'm sorry. I, 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 no, but I mean, it, it's a matter of it comes down to your health, and it comes down to what you put in, and you can't blame God for some of the sicknesses if you brought it on yourself. You just can't blame him because he says you're going to reap that. Whatever you put in your body, whatever you do, it's going to come back to you. So I can't blame. Now, if God heals you and you did wrong or you did smoke and you had cancer— then that's God's grace and mercy was on you that time. But you're not guaranteed it'll happen again. Exactly. It won't happen again. Exactly. So God gives you an opportunity to say, okay, I'll go ahead and touch you this time, but don't do it again. If you do it again, it's kind of great grace, you know, is is basically, uh, you know, you get a grace period is what you get. Uh, You don't pay your bills for 30 days. You get a 30 day grace period. And then it's punishment, judgment. So God gives you a grace period and I'm going to try to help you out here. But if you don't correct it, there's going to be, you're going to reap. It's true. And you know, I think sometimes we struggle with the discipline and you might be listening, watching right now and thinking, you know, I like it, but I, and I know I'm supposed to change my lifestyle, 
but it's hard for you with the discipline of it. And maybe there's some things that are happening in your emotions and you're, maybe you're eating because you're eating your emotions, you know, like you're eating out of anxiety or fear or you, you don't exercise because of personal disciplines. And we want to pray for you that God would help you to overcome those issues. Whatever it is on the inside, your thinking, your emotions, personal disciplines, routines, structures, that God would help you to overcome those habits, hangups, hardships, difficulties, mindsets. Hop on the phone, get on the website. We want to pray for you, for God to help you and grab your copy of Why Am I Not Healed? Very powerful. Is it God's will to heal? Is it God's will to heal you? For your gift of $40 or more, we will send you Why Am I Not Healed? Through his own personal and family challenges, Pastor Glenn Berto breaks through misunderstandings regarding God's good intentions for his children. He shows how God can turn the worst into the best and use it for our benefit. We will also send you Sarah's In Step with the Spirit book, Marilyn's Move Your Mountain CD teaching, and our healing scripture card. For your gift of $100 or more, we will include our lovely healing Afghan. Filled with scriptures, this beautiful cotton throw will keep you warm and cover you with the healing word of God. Activate the faith you need to move mountains and be healed. Call or click today for this anointed resource. This has been a powerful interview. Glenn, would you pray for our audience? Absolutely, absolutely. Those of you that are dealing with sickness, dealing with illness, you have family members that have had a diagnosis that is not really looking good. We're gonna believe for a miracle today. I want you to start by believing. The, 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 the word belief is the key element in everything. If you believe is said over and over by Jesus, if you believe. And so I want you to believe if God can do that for me, if what he did in my life and resurrect my life, and gave me time with my family. He will do it for you. In the name of Jesus, I command the spirit of death. I command the spirit of infirmity. I command the spirit of sickness to leave right now in every home that it resides. And I pray a miracle right now where you are sitting, right now where you're at, receive it. Lay your hands right on your chest and say, God, he's talking to me and I receive that. And I agree, and I'm in agreement with Pastor Glenn that if you can do it for him, you can do it for me. So I receive my miracle today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes. Amen. So thanks be unto God who always, I love this, I say it every day, leads us to triumph in Christ. And so today is your winning day. And today is my winning day. We don't give up. We don't give up. We don't know how to give up. We just know one thing. We're going to win. The last line, you're going to win. I'm going to win. <laughs>